So in this video, I'm going to answer question three from the January 2013 examination paper. So question three, part A, first of all, asks you what are the relative advantages and disadvantages of the direct step method and the standard step method. So these would include, for, for the direct step method, it would you, know, you would say that the method is less intuitive um, which is a disadvantage. Um, advantage would be that it does not require a lot of iteration, um, iterations. Um, however, it's not suited to a non-prismatic channel. The standard, the standard step method, um, the advantage is that it gives values at regular intervals. However, um, requires small steps or iterations. And another advantage is that it is suited to non-prismatic channels. So, um, like I showed you in the in the lecture, the direct step method, the solution, or you get to the answer very quickly, um, based on your initial value. You, you require less iterations compared to the standard step method, where you have to do probably double or triple the iterations that you do for the direct step method to get to the answer. So again, you'd explain. Um, these um, advantages and disadvantages and that would give you um, eight marks for that question so that requires you to write a brief um, a brief um, couple of sentences about um, each each method so that's fairly easy and the lecture notes should help you um, um, in um, gaining an understanding of the two two different methods hopefully the lab should have um, facilitated in that a lot more so you shouldn't have any issue in in answering that that uh, first part of the question part b is where you need to do the calculation so in part b it says a trapezoidal channel has a bottom width of 10 meters side slopes of one vertical to four horizontal a bed slope of one in a thousand manning's n value of 0 0.03 channel uh, flow is 15 meters cube per second and it says a dam is constructed with a spillway that results in the depth immediately upstream being raised to 1.5 meters. Carry out one step of integration using the direct step method to give how far upstream the depth has reduced to 1.4. So in the question, it sort of gives you everything you need to you need to know to work out that question. The probably difficulty with this question and where students um, lose marks is is um, creating the table and um, calculating the different different um, different parameters, and most of the mistakes are just basic mistakes rather than um, mistakes with the theory. So first of all, what I'm going to do is um, just write down the parameters that are given. So we know that the slope. Get my pen to work. So we know that the slope is equals to not point not not one q is equals to fifteen meters cubed per second and initial y initial is equals to one point five meters. Yep. Now I'm going to draw the channel out to show you what it should be like. It says the bottom width B is 10 meters. So that's talking about this width here. That's 10 meters. It's saying the gradient of this is 1 in 4. And it says use the direct step method. Which is delta x is equals to delta y 
1 minus f of r squared over s naught minus s of f. Yep. And because it's a pres and because it's a trapezoidal channel, area and wetted perimeter, the equations are different. So for area, the equation is b plus x y times y. Here, what x is referring to is um, is the gradient. So the gradient is is so the gradient is uh, one. The gradient is 1 in 4, so x is equals to 4. And then again, p, b plus 2y, square root 1 plus x squared. Yep, again, x here is 4, so this value is x. Yep. So that's the equation for area and that's the equation for wetted perimeter for a trapezoidal channel. So again, like I said in the lectures, um, based on the cross section, the equations will change. So if it's a rectangular channel, area would be b times y, wetted perimeter would be b plus 2y. For a trapezoidal, the area is this and the wetted parameter is, is that. So you need to know these, these equations. Yeah. So that's the information you're given. So now you can sort of um, go ahead and start compiling or creating your your table. Yeah. So first of all, going to do because it only requires one iteration. You only need to do one one step. Yeah. So you first of all we've got. We've got x. Yep. So we're going to start at zero. Yep. And then we've got and then we've got y. And y is one point five. Yep. Now these are the headings at the top. Oh come on. So at the top I'm going to do the headings. So the next heading is area. Yep. So the area is equals to you know the equation, so it's ten plus Four times one point five times one point five, and that gives you twenty four. Yep. So area, the equation for area is this one, and then again the next term is p, and then p is equals to ten plus. 2 times 1.5 times square root 1 plus 4 squared. Yep, and then that gives you 22.369. Yep, next term you need to calculate is V. V equals Q over A. Yep. So which is equals to 15, which is given in the question, divided by 24. Then that gives you 0 0.625. Next term is next term is R. R is equals to A over P. Yep, so it's just 24 divided by 22.369 and you get 1.0728. Next term is f of r squared. f of r squared 
is equal to v squared over gy. So it's going to be 0 0.625. So you can get 0 0.625 over 9.81 times 1.5. Yeah. And the answer you get for that is 0 0.0265. Next one is 1 minus f of r squared, and that's just 1 minus that term, and you get 0 0.973. And then you calculate s of f. s of f is basically just rearranging the Manning's equation. So Manning's equation is q equals 1 over n r to the 2 over 3 s to the half times a yep so when you rearrange that for s of f you get q squared n squared over r to the 4 over 9 times a squared yep so the equation for s of f is Q squared times N squared divided by R to the 4 over 9 um, times A squared. And the value you get for S of F is 0 0.1. Four six. Yep. And then the last one is S naught minus S of F. Yep. S naught is that 0 0.001 minus this value and what you get is um, if I can write it in 0 0.1 5 3 6 so it's 0 0.005 so now you've got everything you need to work out what the um, to do the the one in, um, integration? So you've got everything you need for the direct step equation. Yep. So the equation is delta x equals to delta y, and it's one minus f of r squared over s naught minus s of f. So we've got that value and we've got that value from the table here so that value and that value however what do we use here in the question it tells you what you need to use so in the question it says and um, being raised to 1.5 so it says start at 1.5 carry out one step integration use the direct step method to give how far upstream the depth has reduced to 1.4 so you're going from 1.5 to 1.4, yep. So delta y, delta y is equals to 1.5. That's 1.4 equals 0.1, yeah. So in this sense, it will be negative 0.1, yeah, because you're going um, upstream. So you're integrating backwards, yeah. So what you get is um, 0 0.1, 0 0.97343 divided by 0 0.1 2 3 Yep. And the answer you get from that is 182 meters. So it's saying 182 meters upstream, the depth will reduce to 1.4 meters. Yep. So that's one step using the direct step method. Yep. So that's one integrate integration using the direct step method. So that's what you do in an exam. Is um, initially. Um, 
draw the table, um, start off um, at the y value, either it'll be given in the question or you'll have to work it out from the question. In this question it was um, given and um, in all the other questions it will be given but sometimes you might have to work it out. So, so, so for example like um, in one of the lecture um, examples we had a weir so you had to do the sill height plus the water height. So when I say you will have to work it out you'll, be, you'll have to um, calculate your initial um, point rather than it being um, explicitly given as, as, as in this question. So that's the answer. Now that would get you 12 marks for that question. So 8 for the um, um, sentences on on the two methods and 12 marks for this for this calculation. Another point which I wanted to sort of mention is on the VLE um, there are solutions just outline solutions to this exam paper. So on the VLE um, you'll find 2013 exam paper solutions and what in there you'll find is that for this example the solution says that x is equals to 195 meters yep so you might be getting confused why in the paper it says 195 and why have I worked out 182 so in that example Professor Nigel Wright used the, di um, the direct step method where the equation is like this so it goes same equation Yeah. So he's used this equation. So he's taken an average value. So if you look at the solution, you'll see he's been taking averages to get a more accurate answer. Yep. Yeah. Whereas I've just done I haven't averaged any values. I've just done it um simply um each value as it is. So this val this answer is correct and this value is correct. So in the exam if you're going to use the method without taken the mean that's particularly fine or if you want to use this it's, it's, it's fine. If you're using the mean it's a bit more tricky to create the table that's why I prefer this way as it's more easier for the students to to grasp the concept whereas when you're taking the mean you have to um, play around a bit but both methods are, are valid and um, they're both estimations so they give, they give um, good estimations. So that is um, the answer or the solution to, to that question. I hope that helps and um, there's more, there's similar examples on the tutorial sheets as well so you shouldn't have any, any, any issues.